Oh, hey, didn't notice you there. Wait, I remember you. Let's see how much of me you remember. Okay, number one. Which of the following creatures is named after Australia? Is it A. Ramapithecus, B. Homo habilis, C. Homo erectus, or D. Australopithecus? If you said Australopithecus, then you were wrong. It was actually a trick question. The answer is none of the above. Australopithecus means the ape of the south, Homo habilis means the skilled human, Homo erectus means the human with the erect spine, and Ramapithecus means the ape of Lord Rama, roughly. Okay, second question. Which one of these anthropologists' sons, uncles, daughters, grandfathers, son discovered the first remains of the Homo habilis along with his wife? Is it A. Sergio Aguero, B. Sir Isaac Newton, C. Edward Lewis, or D. Dr. Louis Leakey? The answer is very obviously Louis Leakey. And if you didn't get that correct, then there's only one place I have for you. Okay, now, final question. It doesn't have any options, so good luck. Why was Beer Tawil mentioned in a picture in the previous video? It's a disputed landmass, not because it's useful or valued, but because both sides refuse to claim it. Now, back to our show. If you watched the previous episode till the end, then you know that this episode is about monkeys and their varieties of food and paintings. And no, I'm not kidding. Let me introduce you to the world of the Homo sapiens. Monkeys that evolved so much that they look nothing like monkeys. And you know that because this sound doesn't go too well with this image. Remember how we spoke about branches in the previous episode? Well, we evolved from one such branch of the evolution of the Homo erectus. More specifically, from a branch within that branch called the Cro-Magnon human. Now, why is it called that, you may ask? Well, let's look at the origin story for that. The Cro-Magnon human was first discovered in Cro-Magnon, of course, in the year 1868. It was the first of its kind, resembling a human face, something other fossils failed to achieve. The Homo sapiens proved to be an extremely adaptable species. In fact, they were intelligent to achieve a lot of great things. For starters, they learned how to build tents and how to live in caves where they were clever enough to choose those which did not face southwards to avoid the bitter cold of the winter, which most definitely makes sense because compasses and standard navigation was definitely invented back then. What made them even more successful was their unique, modern for the time, social culture. The Homo sapiens by culture developed separate social tasks for different social groups, traces of which are still evident. Few groups were given the job of hunting in the wild, while the rest worked on more softer and social aspects of life, and also discovering new ways to store and cook food. The people at the time began developing new weapons for something that had been unheard of for a very long period. Battle. Various communities would fight each other for tiny bits of land and the one with the sharper tools had the edge. No pun intended. Regardless, let's move on to art and culture. As civilizations advanced, Homo sapiens began to develop. They started having the urge to express themselves. And sadly, they did not have mobile phones or YouTube. Hence, they had to settle for something which their ancestors had never used. Paintings. Basic colors like red, yellow and blue were used, which tells us that the Homo sapiens somehow knew how to extract natural dyes. Only if they could pass the same knowledge on to the British. They began making jewelry as precious metals, stones and ivory were discovered. Weirdly enough, they had tattoos. Yes, it is still unclear how they made them, but evidence can be found on bone fragments and wall paintings. Other pieces of art included this bison drawn at Altamira near Santander, Spain.
and this painting of what seems to be cattle is La Sau, France. Now, keep in mind that everything we've discussed so far is only a third of the age of the Homo sapiens, which we call the Stone Age. The period we've discussed so far is called the Paleolithic or Upper Stone Age. The next period in human development was the Mesolithic or Middle Stone Age, which lasted for about two to three thousand years and lasted from 12,000 BCE to 10,000 BCE. During this period, people began settling in the Fertile Crescent. Remember the place, it will come up a lot in the series. It's this place and stretches from the areas of Northern Iraq to the Persian Gulf. Now here's where the controversy kicks in. Few scientists suggest that the Mesolithic period began in Europe before it did in the rest of the world. A view which is often questioned due to lack of evidence. Now, during about 8000 BCE, a new age kicked in, the Neolithic Age. The Neolithic Age was the final stage of the Stone Age. Wow, that was a mouthful. Anyway, coming back, people were about to do something that they had never heard of or thought of earlier. They were about to grow their own food. Traces of this ancient farming can still be found in multiple areas of the world. In the areas of China and Eastern India, people started cultivating rice, a crop which still dominates the food market in these regions. Meanwhile, in the Americas, people began growing beets and potatoes, all while the Fertile Crescent was farming wheat and barley. This was to give rise to the first skilled profession, farming. Many new professions were developed, such as cattle rearing and something that would continue for millennia to come, bartering. People would often exchange their produce based on what they needed. Some considered rice to be important, while the rest considered dyes to be important. People now began relying on permanent homes rather than the previous nomadic lifestyles they had been leading for many centuries in the past. In Jericho, during about 7000 BCE, the first few homes were erected. When more and more people started to settle in Jericho, a wall was built around the city to prevent invaders from entering. Slowly, they started to build a civilization. But this is where it gets interesting, because they are not the founders of civilization. This is because they did not act as loudspeakers to the ideas of civilization. The empire we credit with to be the founders of civilization was the Sumerian Empire, which will be our topic for the next video. If you enjoyed the video, then please make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to remain notified. If you know someone who is interested in topics like these, please do share. This is your host, Advait Kauta, signing off.